is the tribe of Dan missing from the 144,000 in Revelation chapter 7? Why is Dan missing? The tribe of Dan. You see, uh, in the book of Revelation, it speaks about this. It says, And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all tribes of the children of Israel. Now, see, watch if you will see Dan. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand, of the tribe of Reuben twelve thousand, of the tribe of Gad twelve thousand, Asa twelve thousand, Nephthalim twelve thousand, Manasseh twelve thousand, Simeon twelve thousand, Levi twelve thousand, Ishakar twelve thousand, Zebulon twelve thousand, Joseph twelve thousand, and Benjamin twelve thousand. Where is Dan here? Where is the tribe of Dan? Where is the tribe of Dan? Okay. Now this sealed. When the Bible says they were sealed, it means they were protected servants of God who would minister during the tribulation of the end times. And the sealed comprised of 12,000 individuals from each of the 12 tribes. Like you have seen. So, if they are Dan is not mentioned in Revelation. Yes, Dan is mentioned in other places. In Genesis is mentioned, in Exodus, in Chronicles is mentioned. But why in Revelation Dan is not mentioned? What would be the issue here? What would be the issue? For some reason, we may kind of tend to think that there is something that they did wrong and why, that's why they are not uh, mentioned. But of course, the Bible does not tell us why the tribe of Dan is excluded from the list of the 12 tribes in Revelation 7. It doesn't give us the, 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 the reason why uh, Dan is not uh, mentioned. Okay, this Dan. In, because it was a member of the 12 sons. However, some background information about the 12 sons of Jacob and the 12 tribes of Israel might provide some clues. First, we have to check a brief history of the 12 tribes. So that you can be able to understand. Now, the 12 tribes of Israel came from the 12 sons of Israel. Israel being the name that God gave to Jacob. Remember in Genesis 32 verse 28, Jacob was uh, given the name Israel by God. Now, Jacob's uh, 12 sons were, were Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Naphtali, uh, Gad, Asher, Ishakar, Zebulun, Joseph, and uh, Benjamin. Okay? That is Genesis uh, 35, 23 to 26, and also Exodus 1, 1 to 4, and uh, Chronicles 2, 1 to 2. Now, the progeny of those 12 sons comprised of the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? In the time of Joshua, when uh, Israel inherited the promised land, the Levites, okay, the Levites' descendants did not receive a territory for themselves. They didn't get. Instead, they had priestly duties and took care of the tabernacle. Remember in Joshua 13, 14. Let me read for you this. Joshua. Joshua uh, 13, verse 14. It tells us about this. It says, Only unto the tribe of Levi he gave none inheritance. The sacrifices of the Lord God of Israel made by, by fire are their inheritance. Uh, as he said unto them. So the sacrifices would be their inheritance. And that's why they were given the, the tithes. Okay? I don't want to get into the stories of tithes and why today you don't need to give your tithes. But anyway, that's a good point to <laughs> ponder. Now, instead, they had priestly duties and took care of the tabernacle. The Levites were given um, several cities scattered through the land. That was, uh, of course, to and, uh, and uh, you have to understand, to fill out the 12th, and uh, allotments, Joseph tribes was uh, the Joseph tribes was divided into two because Jacob had adopted two uh, Joseph's sons, that is Ephraim and Manasseh. You remember that? Essentially, this one gave Joseph a double portion for his faithfulness in saving the family from famine. Remember in Genesis forty-seven eleven to twelve. So this was a. Uh, a double portion for Joseph. 
Now, in this arrangement, the tribes given territories in the promised land were Reuben, Simeon, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, and uh, Naphtali, okay, Naphtali, and uh, who else? Gad, Asha, Ishaka, Zebulun, Benjamin, Ephraim, and Manasseh. And in some places, scripture, in the scripture, the tribe of Ephraim is referred to as the tribe of Joseph. Okay, you, you remember in Numbers, in Numbers also, it, it calls this, Numbers uh, 1, verse 32 uh, to 33. It, some, sometimes, you, you can see this one here, of the children of Joseph, namely of the children of Ephraim, by their generations, and so forth. You see, so Ephraim is also mentioned um, as Joseph, okay? So, after King Solomon died, you remember King Solomon? After King Solomon died, Israel split into two kingdoms. Judah to the south, which included the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, and the tribes combined to make the kingdom of Israel in the north. In the ensuing years, many Israelites in the north um, migrated to Judah in the south to flee the apostasy in their homeland okay that is you can just go and check uh, second chronicles eleven sixteen and uh second chronicles 15 9. now eventually the northern kingdom of israel was destroyed by the assyrians and most of the israelites were either killed or deported and it's likely that many of the israelites who remained migrated to the southern kingdom of judah and many of the faithful before uh as, as also many of the other faithfuls before them had also migrated, okay? So we know Jesus. Jesus was from the tribe of Judah. Paul was from the tribe of Benjamin. Anna was from the tribe of uh, Asher. John the Baptist from, was, was from the Levite uh, tribe, Levi. But since the, uh, since the diaspora in um, around AD 70, identifying the tribe of any given Jew is more difficult. Right now, it's, you, you cannot really say who is from where after AD 70. You can't really explain who is from where, who is from there, unless those who are mentioned, like the, like the, like the way I've said, Jesus from the tribe of Judah and, and things like that. So right now, you cannot really identify who is from where. Okay? Now, during the tribulation, when most of the world is following the Antichrist, 144,000 Jews, okay, will be sealed by God, and the 12 from each tribe. This will be just for a specific service which God is going to do with them. He knows what he'll be doing, okay? Now, God has kept track of the tribes, and he knows who is who. As we may not know, but God knows, okay? The tribes with sealed individuals, they are as listed, like we have read in uh, Revelation 7, 5 to 8. But it is not the same list which is found in Joshua 13 to 22. The sealed tribes in end time include Manasseh and Ephraim, that is under Joseph's name, but Dan is not included, and there is no explanation given as to why. We don't know why. Why Dan is not mentioned there. Hmm. And uh, you see, there are, there are some other details of the history of the tribe of Dan that might try to explain why Dan is missing from the list of the sealed tribes in Revelation. And uh, in Judges 18 from verse 1 to 31, it tells the story of the people of Dan falling into gross idolatry. Okay, the tribe of Dan. They fell into so much idolatry. Also, the Danites did not like the territory which was allotted to them near the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, the Amorites and the Philistines gave them trouble. That's, that's what they usually uh, say. So they sent out spies to find a better area in the north. Okay, and uh, the Danites learned 
uh, of an area inhabited by a peaceful group of people whom the Danaanites proceeded to wipe out and they moved the entire tribe into that region just south of the present day uh, Lebanon. There they established their main city and called it the city of Dan. Okay. Now, later in the divided kingdom, the people of Dan were part of the northern kingdom of Israel. And King Jeroboam, Jero, Jeroboam, do you remember King Jeroboam? Now, King Jeroboam established two pagan worship centers, one in Bethel and one in Dan. Go and read First Kings 12, 25 to 33. You'll be able to understand that story. Sadly, this man made worship at Dan centered on golden calf and become one of Dan's lasting legacies of worshiping this this calf idol are you seeing are you seeing where the story of dan is coming from and how dan started worshiping idols instead of the true god so now skipping ahead to revelation 7 all the tribes of dan are mentioned in the end times in the time of tribulation except for dan and commentators through the centuries have proposed the following reasons for why the tribe of Dan is not included in the list. Let me give you the reasons. Now, one is uh, the Dan's historical embrance, uh, embracing or embrance of uh, idolatry and immorality, which led to a disqualification for service during the end time. So if you're worshipping idols, then what do you expect? And number two, the Antichrist, do you know that the Antichrist will come from the tribe of Dan? The Antichrist will come from the tribe of Dan. Based on uh, some Satan readings, let's see, let me show you three readings which somehow tend to show that the Antichrist may come from the tribe of Dan. Genesis uh, 49 verses 17. Okay, look at these verses. They somehow signify, it can be, Dan shall be a serpent by the way. Look at that. Dan shall be a serpent by the way. An adder in the path that biteth the horse heels, so that his rider shall fall backward. Hmm. Who is that serpent who will bite the heels? Do you remember in Genesis that the serpent, the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman, There'll be animosity between that. Now Dan is being called that kind of serpent. And also see Deuteronomy 33. Deuteronomy 33 verse uh, 22. 33 verse 22. See what he says. And Dan, he said, Dan is a lion's whelp. He shall leap from Bashan. Hmm. He's also speaking about the same thing. You see? Dan shall leap from Bashan. Let's also see the book of Jeremiah 8, 16. Jeremiah 8, verse 16. Again, Dan is mentioned in the ways of Samuel being the Antichrist. Bring the Antichrist. The snorting of his horses was heard from Dan. Remember what you have talked about? The whole land trembled at the sound of the neighing of his strong ones. For they are come and have devoured the land and all that is in it, the city and those who dwell therein. Hmm. The snorting of the horses of Dan. Now when you combine this with what you have read in Deuteronomy, that seems Dan will be bringing some issues. Because even when you see, for behold, I will send serpents, cockratis, cockratrices among you, which will not be charmed and they shall bite you, says the Lord. So God is going to send something and is again as the tribe of Dan. So does it mean that there is something which will be wrong with the tribe of Dan? Probably they will bring in the Antichrist. Another, another reason why uh, most scholars think that the tribe of Dan was uh, not accepted by God is because by the time of Solomon, okay, by the time of Solomon, King Solomon, the tribe of Dan had assimilated with the neighboring Phoenicians, you remember? That is as Chronicles 2.14. Okay? Chronicles 2.14 uh, hints that. And also, they lost their national identity. So if they mix up with the other people and uh, they become like them, 
then what happens? You lose your identity. And that's why the Jews are always not intermarrying so much. Why? Because they don't want to lose their identity. See, the son of a woman of the daughters of Dan, and his father was a man of Tyre, skillful to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in iron and in stone and in timber and in purple and blue and fine linen and crimson and also grave, uh, uh, also to grave any matter, manner of graving and to find out every device which shall be put on uh, to him with thy cunning men and with the cunning men of my Lord David thy father. Hmm. So these guys, they are mixing up and they are fixing up their, their ideas with the, the neighboring Phoenicians. This, this, this is a kind of hint. This is a kind of hint. You can go and uh, read more to understand the whole story. But this is a kind of hint to show that the tribe of Dan has already mingled with the uh, Phoenicians and uh, they have lost their national identity. You can't really say who is Dan and who is the other guys. And also another point which makes uh, it to seem as if probably these guys are uh, th 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 this is why God did not want the story with Dan is uh, the tribe of Dan once was the most popular tribe and they declined in numbers and uh, influence until by Ezra's time it had been totally wiped out and this would explain why Dan is not listed among the tribes in uh, 1 Chronicles 4 to 7 or in Revelation chapter 7 so how are you going to mention them and they are already wiped up wiped out are you seeing the point so i think that's why uh the tribe of dan is missing from all this is missing from the 144,000 mentioned because there is already not there and also we see that some character traits of uh, seeming to bring the antichrist so God, I don't think he'll use that. But here's his reason. You know, God is all knowing. We cannot pretend to know everything. He knows everything. And if you're out there and you're still wondering, how can I be a be a uh, how can I be a partaker of the goodness of God? How can I be saved? Because I don't want to face all the things which are coming in the world. It's only through the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it's all about understanding how that Christ died for our sins that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. How did Christ die? He died by shedding his blood. Why was the blood important? Because the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that without shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins. And why do we have to shed blood? Because the life of the flesh is in the blood as is written in Leviticus 17, 11. So why do we have to remove the life? Because the wages of sin is death. We are all sinners. No one is righteous. No, not one. But 2000, ago, 2000 years ago, a man named Jesus, while he was still sinners, died for us. So that whosoever will believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Why was Jesus so significant? Why was his death important? Because he was sinless. And only a sinless blood can atone for the sins of a sinful person. And Jesus being sinless, he atoned for our sins. So right now all we need to do is to understand that and believe it and confess it out. All you need to do is understand. Once you have understood, then confess it out to God. As the book of Romans tells us, confess it out to God. Tell him what you have believed you can tell him, Jesus, now I believe that you died for my sins. You were buried and you rose again, as the Bible says. And I receive that atonement by faith, that gift of salvation. Once you do that, my friends, you're saved. And nothing else is to worry you. So hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope you've been able to uh, be edified in one way or another. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also so like, uh, share the video to other people. Let them get to hear. And also you can uh, subscribe to watch more videos which I post every, every day. And in the descriptions uh, below, we have other links to other channels. Please go and check them out. There's a lot of good things in those channels. And God bless you and have a blessed time.